Buying a home can be a very stressful process and my hope is to help you guys through that by breaking down a step-by-step -step guide to making the home buying process a very comprehensive and simple journey that is actually enjoyable rather than stressful and complicated. Uh, my name is Eunice Muffla. I'm part of the Hershenberg Group, one of the biggest organizations in Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, and we're part of Real Brokerage, which is the fastest uh, growing web-based brokerage in the country. And today I'm really trying to help a lot of my clientele, future clients, first time home buyers, understand what does the home buying journey look like and how can we simplify it for you so that way you know what you're getting into and you have proper expectations getting into it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, and I'm gonna take you step one through five. Going, uh, starting from step number one, um, before anything, you have to be connected with the right real estate agent and mortgage or lender. So this can be a bank, this can be a, a local lender or mortgage company, but ensuring that you have a proper agent and lender will make this whole entire process seamless and uh, a lot more effortless. It will help you, you know, it will take a lot of the weight off of your shoulders and ensure that you have proper professionals behind you and backing you throughout the process. Um, and then step number one is that pre-approval process. Um, so that essentially is going to be when the bank or the lender is going to gather documentation from you. They're going to get a mixture of tax returns, income statements. They're going to get your credit report. Uh, they're going to get your debt to income. They're going to take into account, you know, your, your payments, your housing, your, your debts, student loans, um, and all that to say, and, you know, take a mixture. If you have a co-signer or if you're married or you're single, they're going to put all of that together to give you an approval amount. And that is the amount that you can use to go ahead and start looking at homes for. Um, so for example, they might say, we can give you a loan up to 500,000. Um, so you can use $500,000 and whatever you have to put down on a home, you can add on top of that. So if you are, you have 220,000, you can buy a home up to 520,000. If you have 50,000 to put down, then you can go ahead and buy a home up to 550,000. Um, typically newer uh, and first time home buyers are going to be looking to put around three to 10% down. Um, you know, I would prefer, typically it's better to put more down, but for, you know, instances, especially in this market, it might be a little more difficult. Uh, so for, for that situation, you know, you just kind of have to measure and acknowledge and speak with your lender about some of those scenarios. But after you have that pre-approval, we can go ahead and move on to step number two, which is going to be the hunt. Uh, so this is where it kind of gets fun. This is where you can really start sitting down with your agent and you can start pinpointing exactly where you guys want to start looking and where you want to live in the future. So there's going to be a variety of things that you guys are going to take into account uh, with location being one of the most important ones. Of course, price is, you know, based off of the pre-approval you just got, you're going to have to filter by price, uh, zip codes maybe. Uh, and then of course, school districts, if you have kiddos that you want to be within a certain ISD, um, you're going to have to start filtering based on those criteria. Uh, and then of course your size, your amenities, your features, um, your, you know, your preferences when it comes to exterior, interior. Um, and then maybe you decide you guys want to actually buy land and build your own home. So there's a lot of things that you have to weigh. And what I tell my clients all the time is it's best to go ahead and just start looking at a different options in the market, understand, okay, what is, per, what is on the market? What can we start looking at? And we can start eliminating what we do not want and really narrowing down what exactly we do want. And, you know, keep in mind that the perfect home is not going to be, you know, just there right in front of you right away. Um, if at any, you have to really be patient and, you know, take your time looking through that. And eventually you will understand, okay, this home works for us. This home doesn't. Are we willing to compromise on these things? Or are we not? And, um, you know, with the help of your agent and the professionals on your team, um, you eventually will find that right home for you, whether it's a forever home or not. Um, you know, it's a discussion for you and your family and, you know, the agent will help you throughout that process. Once you find the home, we're going to go ahead and move on to step three, which is the offer. So this is when you really sit down with the agent and let them know, hey, you know, we're ready to go ahead and make an offer on this home. Now the agent will go ahead and start running their comps on the home. So that's a comparative market analysis or a CMA. So essentially they're going to take the data from the neighborhoods around it and they're going to compare the pricing to that home that you want to make an offer on to help you understand what is a fair offer on this home. So that way you're not overpaying for it and the, 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 the seller is not getting too much under market value. Um, but you know, our job as a buyer's agent is to get you guys the best deal possible. So if we can get under market value, we are going to do it. Um, so we're gonna build rapport with the listing agent 
to ensure that we know exactly what the seller is looking for. And then we're going to put an offer together based off of the price point on the home, uh, how much you guys want to put down on the home, and then we have an option period. So we have to exactly understand how long are we going to go into the contract with an option period. And that is essentially the time frame you have to do your due diligence on the home, uh, get your inspections, you know, have your family members look at it and really make up your mind. And there's going to be a small option fee associated with that. So typically we'll do a seven day option period with two to $500 option fee. And if you pull out of the contract, you go ahead and give that up to the seller. And then there's something called earnest money. So your earnest money is that good faith deposit that you will put with the third party, which is the title company. And they will hold your option money and your earnest money. Earnest money is typically going to be about 1% of the purchase price. So if it's a $300,000 home, it's going to be about a $3,000 earnest money deposit. And then we're going to have our typical closing timeline, which is typically 30 to 45 days. Um, so as you go through through the contract, you know, if you guys can come to an agreement, you'll go ahead and execute a contract and enter the contract. Uh, and then again, you have maybe five to seven days to go ahead and do your inspections, negotiate repairs, if any, um, and then go ahead and make up your mind if you're going to go through and go ahead and purchase the home. After you exit that option period, um, you know, if everything goes smoothly, now the lender is going to start going through with their underwriting. Uh, and this is essentially verifying that every, all the documentation and information you gave them has been verified and that everything is still in good standing. It's important not to take on any new debt or payments in this time period. It is very crucial not to do that. And they're going to go ahead and order the appraisal as well. So they can, the lender will go ahead and assess the value of the home on their own as well. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts whenever you're under contract. And that's why it's so important to have a good lender and good agent on your side to really help you kind of understand what's going on. And a lot of this is really not going to be stressful when you're in the process because there's a lot of different teams carrying on. And, you know, while this is going on, the title company, um, so another third party is going to be doing the title work to ensure that the title is clear um, and getting ready for that closing. Um, so as I said, so step, step three is the offer and then step four is the under contract part of it. As I said, the step four really covers under uh, contract part of it with inspections, you know, negotiating repairs, if any, um, getting the appraisals done, making sure you're getting the underwriting and all your documentation is. And it's your responsibility to be in co communication uh, with the lender and agent to make sure that you are not missing anything. It just helps everything move along a lot more seamlessly. Um, and then, of course, if the appraisal comes back well, um, you are pretty close to the end and we're getting very close to closing on the home. So the fifth step and the final step of this whole entire process is going to be the close. So before you do a closing, you'll typically have a final walkthrough, um, you know, within the week before of closing. Uh, and that is for you and your family really just to walk through the home one last time, make sure everything looks good. And as you uh, remembered it from the previous time you saw it, Make sure everything is good to go before you go ahead and finalize this purchase. Uh, and then on closing day, um, you will go to the title company or wherever you set up the closing. Uh, and you will typically just bring a driver's license and some form of uh, identity uh, and then the cashier's check or uh, you will go ahead and wire the funds and you will get a clear to close with the closing disclosure uh, about three days before your closing. So you'll know exactly how much you have to bring to the closing table. Um, and they should be keeping you up to date, maybe, you know, even before you enter contract about how much, you know, on, uh, on average you are expected to, uh, number one, bring to close and what your monthly payment will be. Um, so after everything looks good, you'll go ahead and sign the closing documents with yourself or whoever is co-signing with you. Um, and then after that is signed, uh, the transaction will typically fund within a few hours. You will get the keys and you can go ahead and move into your brand new home. Uh, and the cool thing about this is uh, your monthly payment won't actually start until the following month after you close. So if you, if you close on a home July 15th, you will not start paying on the home until September 1st. Uh, so they give you like a month and whatever, um, you know, as a buffer, which is nice, you know, for the homeowners to kind of get settled into the home and not be stressed out right away. Um, and then it's important to set up utilities right away to make sure you have water, um, you know, cooling, you have electricity and that sort of thing. And just some tips again, just to, you know, kind of help you guys with some little nuggets along the way. Uh, again, make sure you get a good realtor and a good lender. It will just make your life so much easier whenever you're going through this process. Uh, and then another tip again, whenever you are going through the financing phase, if you're getting an approval and things like that, 
ensure you don't make any big financial decisions in that meantime because that can really sway and influence the approval amount um, and it can really harm you and I've seen it and it's not a fun thing to deal with. So avoid any sort of debts or big payments or expenditures. Just try to you know, uh, be a little bit smarter with your budgeting uh, during those few weeks or month or two um, you know, and it will go a long way. And then after you close, you can go ahead and buy that new car or go ahead and do whatever you would like. Um, but it's just important to be cautious during that period. Uh, and then another tip is if you go ahead and make, you know, one extra payment a quarter or even one extra payment a year onto your mortgage and you pay it towards the principal, um, you will actually knock down, you know, the loan term. If you do a 30 year fixed mortgage, you will knock that down a few years and you will actually build up a lot more equity in the long run. So if you can afford to pay down the loan a little bit early, uh, most of the time it will go a long way um, and it will help you out a lot. And remember, you know, buying a home is a very, very important decision. It, it can be a very fun process. Uh, you just have to be responsible about it. Understand, you know, if it makes sense for you or if it does not. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, real estate in America has been one of the greatest wealth building tools for you know, it's almost everybody, almost everybody has benefited from owning a home and home ownership. So, you know, this could be your chance and your opportunity to go ahead and do that for yourself and for your family. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. I hope I answered all of them in the video. And I hope that gave you a good idea of what the home buying process would look like. Uh, again, this is a very kind of step-by-step -step process. It kind of covers all the little steps in between. Um, but it's not to say other things cannot pop up along the way. So it's important to have a professional that's seen a lot of the things uh, within a transaction. So that way, if anything comes up, they know how to handle it and make sure it does not affect you guys. So again, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your time. Uh, my name is Eunice Muffla, and I'll see you guys next time.